Welcome back to another episode of Morning Coffee. I'm your host, Rick Alexander. You guys can interact with me or follow me at Rick Alexander underscore or at the Morning Coffee podcast on Instagram. Now, if you're getting a lot from this show, if it's changing your life or even changing the way that you look at your life, it would mean the world to me if you would head to iTunes and give us a five-star review so that we can continue to climb the charts and get this information to more and more people. Over the last year and a half, I've focused my work on the the story that we tell ourselves about our lives. Your entire life is a bit of a story that you're telling yourself. And if you could tell yourself a different story, you could probably change your life quite a bit. And so I did that work for the release of my newest book, which is coming out in early 2020. But getting excited for that release, I actually wanted to go through a lot of the information that I had learned, a lot of my notes, and synthesize it into maxims, which is what we're getting into today. I've got 21 maxims to maximize your life. And what these are is just things that seem to be true about the human experience. And if you could understand how they are true, you could understand how they could change your life. And so if you go to rickalexander.com, what you're going to find is if you click on articles, the maxim of the day is going to be posted, whatever the last maxim was. And it's also going to have journal entries and thought experiments in there so that you can figure out how to apply these things to your own lives. And so a bit of an interactive experience. So throughout the next year, uh, through my speaking, through my book release, and through these maxims, I'm excited to see how this information can really change the world and change your world if you give it an opportunity to. common human struggle is to navigate a world of infinite complexities with a finite mind. And regardless of why you think you're here or what it is that you want to do or why you think humans are here, the thing to understand is that that struggle unites us all. We all have very similar um, framework in which to deal with an unlimited amount of frames, essentially. And as humans, we have a lot of ways of talking about really big ideas in terms that people can grapple with, right? Like that's what religions essentially are. You take the infinite and you add a particular to it so you can understand it, you can you can uh, get your hands around it, you can praise it fundamentally, right? That's what we do. So we take this infinite, we add a particular to it, and that's how we understand things to be true. But it, understand that whenever you do that, you create space to not know the entire thing, right? Which is why if you go back a couple episodes, I said, hold space for the fact that the rug could get pulled out from under you. When you find things that aren't true, you don't want to deny those things. You want to just act on them, right? Most of us defend our worldview in light of things that we know actually aren't true. And the the reason that this happens is because we're grappling with such complex topics and such complex problems And again, we have such a limited framework in which to do it. You know, uh, back in October, I was listening to Mark Groves give a talk at this conference that Danielle went to. And uh, he was talking about, he was sort of like thinking about the cosmos and how we got here. And and he was talking about how this fact that like his thinking will go into loops over time. It's like you end up here and then you end up there and your thinking will just get in this like really negative spiral as you begin to comprehend things that are way bigger than yourself like life itself right it's like you are life and at the same time if you really try to grapple with it it's it's going to leave you to one of two places and this is what mark was saying in his talk he was like it's either going to land you at a mental fracture because you're not going to be able to come to grips with it or you're going to come to complete surrender and incomplete surrender is i think where the human gains their ability to deal with this so it's like the one tool that we have to help us deal with the the infiniteness of life in some way. And so I would say one of the one of the ways that we actually get to contentment in this life is through surrender. And if you look at religions, right, they always get to a point where you actually do have to surrender. You have to surrender to the will of something bigger than yourself. And the reason that that equation keeps finding itself in the human experience is because what's bigger than ourselves is everything. One of my favorite quotes by Neil deGrasse Tyson is, the universe is under no obligation to make sense to you. That's why I think surrender is such an invaluable human tool because you're not going to be able to make sense of this stuff. Like there's some things in life that are still beyond our grasp and maybe they will be for the entire time that you spend yourself here in this human existence. But the beauty is if you can reach this point of surrender where you come up with a perspective that the right opportunities will present themselves and the right people will be in your lives and the right teachers will be in your lives and the right adversity will be in your lives, 
right? That's why if you come to that perspective, you are actually free to move through these things. If you're continuously grappling with the complexities of life, then you do yourself a disservice, right? And so you'd ask yourself, but how can anybody know? How could anyone actually know if the universe is for you or not? And it's like, well, I don't know, but you could actually just act out what seems to be true. And so if you find yourself in adversity over and over and you keep asking yourself, why is this happening for me? You come up with reasons. And every time you come up with a reason, it gives you an invitation to a new sort of life right? And a new way to be different. And so every time you take complete ownership over the situation you're put in, understanding that the universe is putting these situations in front of you in order to get you ultimately where you should be. And then you find that that actually becomes true. And then what's interesting is you can also just stay gridlocked in the complexity of all of it. And then in that you tend to turn to cynicism or you tend to turn to something that isn't so productive for your lives because again, the complexity will lead you to mental fracture. And so then what you find is you're living in a way that's actually not that productive for you. And so in light of the overwhelming complexities, we still know a lot about how to be here. And that's what I want to focus on for this episode. That's what I want to keep in mind. That's my emphasis behind principles and maxims, right? Because they tend to give you guidance and you can choose to do with that guidance, whatever it is that you want, right? And so we can learn a lot about how to be here just from the common struggle. For example, just think back to the most absolutely fucked up situations that you found yourself in. And now understand that each of us are shouldering these regularly, right? The person that you stand next to in Starbucks is literally dealing with something that you couldn't begin to imagine and they're totally ill-equipped to deal with it. And we all are constantly. And so if you understand that, we can show up for each other. We can hold space for the fact that people are dealing with this. And so what you begin to realize is that we're united in this common struggle and that although we have our different nuances and how we're trying to navigate it, it doesn't mean that we're not all dealing with the exact same thing. And that's what's important to understand. That's what helps you lean into the the human part of all of this connection. It's like you're still here and you have this deep connection to everybody around you and you can lean in or away from it. You can let the complexities turn you into a smaller way of being, which is what happens when you just try to grapple with them you you find that you're living in a smaller way whereas if you just accept what is and then you decide that you're going to live on your terms like maybe you are going to decide that the universe is for you and maybe you do decide that all the adversity is actually handed for you and then in that you're free to find a solution that actually works and is productive for your lives but you're not obligated to it and that's certainly true and so when people go through really malevolent times or really negative times and they hold on to those negative times and they they leave with a perspective that the universe is against you or doesn't give a fuck about you or is skewed against you in some way. Uh, I think that's fair enough. But something that keeps coming up in these maxims is that time's going to pass either way and the situations are going to pass either way and you're going to go through them either way. And so if you're going to be here, why not find out why they're happening for you? Why not find a perspective that allows you to grapple with them in a way that at least gets you somewhere that you want to be? Because understand that all of the complexities you're grappling with, you're never going to get your mind around fully. You're never going to get your hand around fully. But that doesn't mean that you can't come up with a narrative that, that is actually productive for getting you through these things. And I would say fundamentally, that's your responsibility. Because if you do, you know, through each struggle, you say, why is this happening for me? And then you figure that out. You become a completely different human right? You, you learn lessons that other people will never, ever learn. And you have that wisdom and you can be that for other people in your lives. And then you, you become the rock in which other people can lean on when circumstances or chaos get really difficult. And so I would say because we have infinite complexities and such a finite mind with which we're navigating the whole thing, it's actually a bit liberating. If you can get to the point of surrender, if you can get to the point of letting go, you're free to find a perspective that actually serves you and, and gets you somewhere you want to be. The time is going to pass either way, but you have the opportunity to put yourself in the driver's seat with the right perspective on the whole thing. And that's what I would push you to do. It's like the right perspective creates an arc far before it rains. It's actually really important that you understand that because most people don't know they're fucked up until they're already drowning. And so as you find yourself navigating this life, I would just urge you to find an understanding of all of the complexities that allow you to surrender and yet continue to move forward. Have an aperture that's wide enough to 
take in more truth and more perspective and more of what could be true while surrendering to the fact that you'll never really understand it fully but that you don't really need to right you you can have a you can live a perfectly good life a really happy life without ever really fully grappling with the complexities and i'd say that's your only option fundamentally because if you deal with the complexities enough you end up at either mental fracture or surrender anyway love you guys have an amazing day we'll talk tomorrow on morning coffee